in the program, it says closing keynote. Um, and uh, my title of my um, speech is Building the Culture of Peace, Call for Transformative Action. And transformative action cannot be closing. It can be best the opening, because we have to remain open for action. We cannot close on call for action. So it will be my hope that I will lay out uh, why the culture of peace is important, why uh, ECD is very closely connected with the culture of peace, and um, why we need to energize ourselves in the current global context. Um, we know uh, Mahatma Gandhi, the, the apostle of nonviolence, had focused so much on early childhood development, be beginning every efforts for peace, and he said, if for teaching the real peace, we need to begin with the children. And that, that, that is what inspired all of uh, us to come here to join and listen to each other. But um, we are, if I know the background of the participants of this, this conference, what I have heard, we are mostly a committed group of people. So we are sharing each other's experience, getting energy from each other, and trying to find out better ways, more creative ways of doing things for um, the early childhood development. So that, I believe, is very important for us. But um, as we all know, um, quest for peace is uh, a, an eternal endeavor for humanity. We are trying for that for long. And uh, why peace is so important? Uh, because if I um, can uh, recall Rima's speech this morning, she quoted from the Charter of the United Nations, uh, adapted in 1945, which says that it will make efforts to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. I believe peace is much more than war, and as we say, that peace is not just the absence of war. So we, we have to go beyond that, because peace provides this provides us opportunities for bringing out our best potentials. I think that is why peace is also important, particularly as children are born and they, their bodies, minds take shape. And that is why peace is important to kiss, uh, like when we were seeing the sesame seeds, uh, as, uh, sesame street uh, videos, one woman was saying, I need a place of peace. And that is what all of us want, to, so that the children grow up as uh, in their full best potential. My context is mostly the United Nations, so I will bring that in from time to time. Ewan was born 1945, 73 years ago. And in these 73 years of Ewan's existence, despite all the best efforts, we still do not see a world in peace. Anytime you open a newspaper or a TV channel, you are, your mind is shocked 
again and again by the intensity, severity, and the, the, the extent of uh, uh, conflict and extent of disrespect, extent of hatred going on throughout the world, extent of violence. So that is why I believe that what UN has been doing, and this is not critical, UN is the, the best global institution we have. But some refocusing is needed. And that is why I believe that if UN, instead of managing or stopping conflict, managing conflict, resolving conflict, um, stopping war, Yes, this is a major part of um, a peaceful world, but simultaneously it should have focused on building up that potential for peace, to, making, to make peace sustainable. And that is what we, are to, uh, what, what we refer to as building the culture of peace. Because this ad hoc, um, peacekeeping missions, uh, peace missions, mediation, uh, conflict resolution missions do not go to the root of uh, what is needed to be done. And I believe I call this at a, a kind of a firefighter's approach. We get a call in the fire station, we have a fire. The fire brigade goes there puts off the fire, comes back. Not ensuring that the fire does not recur. Fire does not come up again. And for that, a different approach is needed. And somehow, there is a, also, if I may use the word, uh, very often used these days, the collusion of some vested interests in this kind of approach by the United Nations. Because this, this fits in into their broader geostrategic interest, not the human security interest of the international community, not the human security, uh, not to ensure security of human being, but ensuring and strategic interest of the security of the states come in there. So human security dimension is lost in the work of the United Nations, particularly in the work of the Security Council, which is responsible for international peace and security. So there we, we come into a problem, and it is not that we cannot change this. To paraphrase Margaret Mead, uh, she said, if human beings, human species have invented war, the same species can for sure invent peace and bring in peace. So that, that is what we need to focus on. And I believe that um, uh, the, this is the reason when the world, uh, uh, the uh, well, maybe I should, fast forward, come to the point of the ending of the Cold War. As the Cold War was coming to a close, peace-loving people, right-minded, right-thinking people started thinking how to get peace not broken again. So there was many thinking, and I should say that uh, uh, UN Organization for uh, Education, Culture, and Science, UNESCO, started talking about the culture of peace. It said that, and UNESCO constitution, as adopted in 1948, had said if War is created in the minds of men, 
then defenses of peace should be built on the minds of men also. So that is why the focus was on how to change that mindset, how to make individuals contribute to the global peace rather than a superimposed structure of um, many structural initiatives of the past which has failed. And then it talked about change of, changing of the character, changing of the personality, changing of the behavior, changing of the mindset. So in that way it was considered and there was a, a global conference in Ivory Coast and I remember um, uh, uh, in the morning Pia mentioned about the ECD in Ivory Coast, uh, 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 the program that is that she visited. And it was called the Congress, International Congress on the Minds of Men. And, and uh, that, that was the, the point where the culture of peace got a global uh, support, but it's continued to be debated and discussed, so it was called a, a, a kind of a program effort of UNICEF, not taken as a policy uh, directive by the United Nations. And then we uh, felt, and uh, I, I will be happy to, to honor and privileged to say that uh, at that time in 1996, um, I became the ambassador of Bangladesh to the United Nations. And in January 97, Kofi Annan became the Secretary General of the United Nations. In July 1997, I wrote to him proposing that culture of peace should be taken up as an item of the United Nations, agenda item of the United Nations General Assembly. And it should be discussed in the plenary of the United Nations. And after much hassle, of course, um, when we talk about peace, particularly the culture of peace, always there is a debate. But we wanted to focus that in a post-Cold War situation, to benefit from so-called peace dividend, we must do something more than what was tried by the international community earlier. And we said two things are necessary, and this is also valid now. One is, a, well, two things relating to the individual. One is that personally, I should be confident to say that I can live my life in a peaceful, non-violent way. I do not have to be aggressive to reach my goals. I can reach my goals in a peaceful way and I do not have to achieve my goals at the cost of another person. So that, that is the basic message we are trying to give. The other dimension, personal dimension, individual dimension is that we need to think of us as a part of a bigger global family, as a global citizen that we should know that anything that we do has positive or negative has a, an impact on other parts of the world and anything that happens there has an impact on me. And that is what is very important. I sometimes simplify it to my students when I talk to them about the culture of peace by saying, think of it, you are going out of your dorm room, switch off the light. The moment you switch off the light in your room, just think 
that energy is lighting up a, a, a hut in a rural part of Africa or Asia. So that is what happened. It is as simple as that. Any paper, envelope, or any paper that you recycle or save or reuse contributes to the saving of our planet. So these are the simple things that we want each one of us to feel like a global citizen. So this is the problem uh, uh, that I wanted to share uh, with you. And then after the, the United Nations adopted the Culture of Peace uh, agenda item, we worked, uh, Rima mentioned about 1997, the, uh, the resolution on the International Year for the Culture of Peace. In 1998, we adopted uh, a resolution, International Decade, because the Nobel Peace Laureates, leaving Nobel Peace Laureates, wrote to um, Bangladesh that one year is not enough to promote a longer term objective like the culture of peace. So we need at least a decade. So we adopted, a, UN adopted a resolution declaring 20, 2001 to 2010 as the international decade for the culture of peace and nonviolence for the children of the world. And for the children world of the world doesn't mean that it will be only for children's activity. No, it is for the children of the world so that the early childhood development is taken care of by the adults. It is for the children of the world as um, articulated by the adults. And that is what happened. And then finally in 1999, uh, the UN adopted its declaration and program of action on the culture of peace. So this is, this is the booklet which contains that declaration on the culture of peace uh, in September 1999. And I, I believe that this booklet and this one is a world fit for children. And I think this booklet contains the Convention on the Rights of the Child adopted in 1989. So next year will be 30th anniversary of this convention's adoption. And this is a big connection. I did not hear many references to this convention in this conference, but I think it is very important. This is one document which has been the most signed, ratified human rights treaty in the history of the United Nations. Well, maybe some distance is there because we are having this conference in this country. Only country standing out from this convention is the United States. And that, that is a big, big challenge because otherwise it would have been the most universal human rights treaty. Not only that, the initial intention of the U.S. to sign this treaty has been withdrawn. So it is even not on the cards of consideration. Um, so, and at that time, I think um, uh, uh, the, the Culture of Peace Program of Action, this booklet, specified five actors who will be implementing this uh, document. The first was, of course, the member states, the countries of the United Na uh, members of the United Nations, 193 of them. And then secondly, it would be, and very importantly, it gave very prominent role to civil society. Civil society has not got that much a prominent role in any other document of the United Nations. And we believe that that is uh, rightfully. Civil society 
during the last 20 years, they have shown tremendous enthusiasm to pick up the cause of the culture of peace. Thirdly, they mention about media. Again, the role of media, and we have uh, listened a number of times with Sesame Street and the website, all these things are very important to promote this, and media had been really uh, rather negligent about the culture of peace, uh, covering war, covering the commercial interests of their journals, magazines, newspapers are more important, uh, t television companies in that way. Fourthly, it has given a big role to individuals belonging to any professions, any pursuit, including religious leaders, interfaith groups, everything, professors, teachers, artists, journalists, everybody can contribute to the culture of peace. To promote to the culture of peace, it, does, it is not necessary to be a politician or a diplomat or a, a peace activist. It's everybody because it is talking about ourselves, it's talking about our own objectives. And then the final, the fifth, is the United Nations. I think in its humility, United Nations put itself as the last um, actor in promoting the culture of peace. But the United Nations also had been rather slow in, um, in advancing uh, or benefiting from the potential of this program of action. But in recent years, for the last seven, eight years, it has been giving a lot of prominence to the culture of peace. The president of the General Assembly every year calls a high-level forum on the culture of peace since 2012. And last year was a big, big uh, opportunity for us in the context of the early childhood development is to have this high-level forum focusing on the culture of peace and the early childhood development. Its theme was sowing the seeds of the culture of peace, colon, early childhood development is the beginning. And I must say that it was held in September. In December, the General Assembly adopted a resolution forcefully supporting the objectives of the forum, uh, what it did and how it was collaborative. Jim, you should raise your hand whenever I am over time. So, uh, <laughs> so that, that is what happened. But to big credit for the Early Childhood Peace Consortium, which is mentioned in last year's resolution and the two resolutions the year before. So it's the third time ECPC has been mentioned and a resolution and welcomed uh, by the United Nations for its work. So we should be, uh, our chair Rima should be proud of that and we believe that it is very important for us to live up to that, um, those welcoming words by the United Nations General Assembly resolution. We are working on um, the 20th anniversary can I am uh, I'm really uh, thrilled to say that uh, next year will be the 20th anniversary of the adoption of the, that document. I remember on September 13, 1999, I stood up before the General Assembly to propose that program of action, and it was adopted. So we are here nearly 20 years after that, and I'm still uh, laboring on promoting the culture of peace um, to be part of our um, uh, role in whatever capacity we are. So in, I believe that it will be worthwhile for us also to make an effort so that next year, 2019, maybe pegging it with the, with the uh, 20th anniversary of the Culture of Peace Declaration for have having a special resolution dedicated to early childhood development. 
I think that is what we have been speaking about. Thank you. I would share your enthusiasm and cheering for that. But uh, uh, as you know that uh, UN resolutions are product of discussion among, among its 193 countries. And if five of us sitting around the table find it difficult to agree quickly, uh, think of that. And they always, they, for the UN members, the biggest excuse for dilly-dallying or food dragging is to say, I have to, inst to get instructions from my government. And that uh, puts us on the slow track all the time. But I believe that the, the, uh, there is a realization that ECD is very important. And we have to structure, we have to get a leading country um, uh, to uh, steer the resolution. Uh, we can start drafting one, and as uh, the, the um, preparations for the 20th anniversary of uh, the Culture of Peace Program of Action goes on, we can uh, at the same time get a leader, leading country to lead the process because it will be painstaking. It will be, people will firstly say we have a resolution, standing resolution on the rights of the child. So why duplicate it? I would not have problem with that if there is a separate section of the same resolution with the title ECD, Early Childhood Development, and then say whatever we want to say. So that, that is important, but our objective is to get a self-standing resolution. So let me uh, mention here that um, uh, in, in the context of the UN system, um, uh, this resolution will be a, a, an opportunity for us to strengthen uh, our role, but ECPC by itself, by its work, by its um, embracing civil society, governments, educational institutions like Yale, uh, like uh, here, the Yale University. I think it has earned the credibility uh, for uh, moving that resolution, but resolutions, we can be in the back uh, su supporting this resolution, but it has to be some, one at least member state which should initiate. Um, Another message that comes with the, 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 uh, the thoughts on the culture of peace is that, yes, we have a lot to be feel bad about, but don't get discouraged. Don't get dispirited. Don't get, please, dismayed. Try to keep your spirit up. That is what the culture of peace tells us to be. It will carry us forward. We, if we are believers in ourselves as, a, as the agents of peace, we, culture of peace, we can go through this troubled period, troubled times, but see the bright future ahead of us. And uh, today we'll be adopting the ECPC Pledge of Action. Uh, culture of peace, after all, is a longer term. Nobody expects uh, this to happen. And as um, uh, Maria Montessori says, uh, said, that those who want violence prepare their younger generation for violence. We peace lovers do not do that for our children. And this is the time we should get that message, that we need to prepare our children to grow up to be peaceful, nonviolent individuals, able to face the challenges of their life in a non-aggressive way. That is my message for all of you. Let me end by reading out, and the, 
Dr. Lechman mentioned in the morning about this book. This is a, 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 a booklet uh, which carries the foreword that I wrote for that book. So I am reading out from my foreword in that book. It, and I quote, in the end, however, this transformation is contingent upon each one of us. In everything we do, in everything we say, and in every thought we have, there is an opportunity to create the culture of peace. Let us work each day to realize this. Let us choose strategies that require us to face each other with tolerance and mutual respect, viewing each other as fellow global citizens. Let us endeavor to build an inclusive world that respects and cherishes individuals and group differences. And let us commit our efforts and resources to raise our children to be the agents of the culture of peace. Thank you very much.